Roots have always been a contentious issue at Elite, and while they have been much easier to obtain since the addition of deep core mining, there's still many changes that need to be made to bring the different disciplines into balance. I covered this recently in my look at and suggestions on how to improve combat pay, but today we're going to do something different. We're going to take a trip down memory lane at some of the top gold rushes that have hit Elite Dangerous since its launch almost six years ago. I want to start by defining something. You may notice I didn't use the term exploit. This is a word I'm rather cautious about as it implies something significant that it is breaking the terms of service, something that, if true, should result in some sort of sanction from Frontier. While some absolutely fall into this category, as Frontier define them as such and remove credits from players that engaged in them, for most of our list, we're going to look at the gold rushes, things that hit the game quickly only to be removed. What's the difference, you may ask? Well, in the case of gold rushes, there were no formal statements issued, no declarations that they were off-limits, and as such, no action taken against players. You may find this a semantic argument, and I agree, it largely is, but I feel it's an important designation, given it results in a different response from Frontier. Okay, okay, enough already. Let's now take a look down memory lane and look at the top nine gold rushes throughout Elite's history. Oh, and while I solicited input from veteran players and my Twitter followers, there's almost certainly something I've forgotten. So I'll look forward to you sharing that in the comments below. Let's start by going back in time about four years or so and look at one of my personal favorites, planetary scans in Quince. The method was rather simple. You take missions to scan one or more planetary data points, not only in the same system, but on the planet right outside the mail slot of the station. While that sounds easy enough, what made it pay so well so quickly was a bit of a bug. If there was any other commander in your instance and they scanned the beacon, every commander in the instance got credit for the scan. And not just for the one mission, but for all of them. This meant all you usually needed to do was head down to the surface, in open, waiting for your missions to complete. If they didn't, as you were the first there, you'd land and complete the scan for everyone else. As the fastest way back was to self-destruct, many would slam themselves into the surface or engage in quick PvP fights. What made it one of my personal favorites was it made the most sense to do it in the Sidewinder, my favorite ship, for the low rebuy. Griefers had a field day, as there were many targets for them to destroy, and those running the missions generally didn't care, as they needed to die anyway. This one lasted for quite a while, as while it paid well, it wasn't insane like many of the others on our list. Let's now jump to very recent history and talk about something I covered but that only lasted briefly. The Egg. The Egg is the name of a very specific asteroid that has four low temperature subsurface deposits. It was pretty easy to locate, once you had the method expertly explained to you that is, and once there you could use your ship and fighter to respawn the Egg over and over. This netted huge profits for some. I heard stories of north of 400 million an hour. It didn't last long as Frontier, very rightfully in my opinion, fixed the respawning by adding a timer. You can still find the egg and earn good credits from it, but nothing like the profits we saw a few months back. Let's jump back in time again to about four years or so ago and talk about the slave trade. Slaves have always been profitable, but years ago at Rubigo they were out of control. And while trading them can earn you good credits, it was not trading them in Rubigo that paid big. What do I mean by not trading them? Well, it was simple. You'd take a mission to run slaves, they would board your ship, and you'd immediately abandon the mission. This would result in the slaves being marked as stolen, and while you would lose some reputation for this, when you sold them right back to the same exact station, you'd not only earn all that rep back and more, but you'd earn huge profits. It was exceedingly boring, as you'd only use the menus, taking mission, abandoning mission, and selling your ill-gotten cargo, having the slaves board your ship and leave your ship, board your ship and leave your ship. Oh, those poor, non-existent digital slaves. It was boring, it was stupid, but damn did it pay well. Jumping again to more recent history, let's look at the first of two ways you could use fleet carriers to earn credits, buying and selling modules. But wait, when you sell a module back to a station, you only get exactly what you paid for it, right? As a quick side note, you do lose 10% when you sell a ship hull back, but you don't lose anything when you sell modules. Okay, so how did this bullshit method work? 
you would add modules for your carrier to sell using fleet carrier services and then immediately sell those back. As the math was screwed up, they were worth more to sell back than they were to purchase, netting you a good profit each time. This didn't last long, and honestly, I didn't see many reports of huge profits, but it was a pretty bullshit way of earning credits nonetheless. Moving back in time again, let's look at passenger missions, specifically in the Rhea system. There were a few ways to do this. For a while, we'd run long distance missions that took about 45 minutes or more in supercruise to earn a couple hundred million an hour. But the big money lasted a couple days, and it was running passenger missions all the way out to Colonia. But Colonia is over 20,000 light years away, you say. How could you earn quick credits like this? Well, you didn't have to go nearly that far, as the missions would very quickly offer you the option to drop them off somewhere much closer for a huge profit. I saw reports of well over 500 million an hour for the couple days this existed, with some players netting billions in a few short hours. Another more recent gold rush from about 18 months or so ago was a bug with the Abrasion Blaster. The Abrasion Blaster lets you remove surface deposits from asteroids, specifically from those you've detonated with seismic charges. The way this one worked was a simple bug. For every Abrasion Blaster you used, you would get an additional fragment. Use two and you'd get double the fragments, three, triple, and so on. I heard stories of folks mining with the Type 10 so they could install the absolute maximum number of abrasion blasters to get an extreme amount of fragments. I'll admit, I don't recall any specific credit amounts, but they were significant to be sure. Back at number four, we looked at a way to use fleet carriers to earn credits by buying and selling modules. Now, let's look at another bullshit way you were able to use carriers, and that was by dropping and picking back up high value cargo. This method needed something big, like a Type 9, Cutter, Anaconda, etc., where you'd sell a number of high value items, say Void Opals, to a carrier, but they wouldn't be deducted from your cargo hold. That is, if you lift it off, drop them in space, and pick them back up. You could do this over and over and over and over again until, well, until you were fucking sick to death of it, that's when. Like a few others, fortunately this one didn't last long at all. Remember when we started and I made this big stupid fucking deal about the difference in an exploit and a gold rush? Well, let's now talk about one of those exploits, Rockforth Fertilizer. This was a commodity that you could purchase at some stations and then sell for insane profits right back to the same station. Pretty quickly after being discovered, Frontier issued a statement about the issue and clarified that anyone using the method would have their credits removed and any assets purchased with those credits, as many tried to launder or rather hide these profits in ships and modules, would be removed from their accounts and they did just this, which was a very, very good thing. I'm not sure how many of this impacted, but I certainly have a friend or two who tried and failed to get away with this method. Let's end by going back in time to the first gold rush I ever personally engaged in, Skimmer Missions in 17 Draconis. The way this worked was simple. You took missions to kill skimmers in the adjacent system. What made it so lucrative were a couple things. You could stack these such that one kill would count toward each mission you took, stacking up to 20 missions at a time. The missions paid great, usually north of 10 million or much more, and completing them was easy. There was a single planetary outpost about 9,000 light seconds away where skimmers would spawn when you approached the surface. Once they spawned, you could just nuke them quickly using dumb fire missiles. You'd rinse and repeat this over and over again until you'd complete all of your missions, netting you a pretty consistent 250 million or more per hour. It was easy, it was quick, and it included explosions. A pretty big win all around. A good friend and creator of my logo, Commander Metsis, used this his first few weeks of the game to earn just over three billion, and he's never had to earn or worry about credits ever since then. You'll notice I didn't cover methods like laser or deep core mining or current Rubigo passenger missions, as these not only still exist, they've been left in place for so long, the term gold rush really no longer applies. While some would argue this is a bad thing, as you can still earn as much or more than 200 million credits an hour, Frontier has seemingly decided this is acceptable. I once asked someone high up at Frontier what they thought we should earn per hour, and, unsurprisingly, I didn't get an answer. At the time, back in late 2018, it seemed the answer was 100 million an hour, 
as they would nerf anything above this and leave anything below. It now seems that number is 200 million per hour, and while it's debatable that this is good, I would argue it's had a very positive impact on the game. More people are playing, more people play in open, as the risk of death and needing to spend literally hours to earn back your rebuy, and especially with the significant upkeep cost of fleet carriers, I would argue it's important that our pay stay where it is. I do, however, strongly believe that balance is needed, and that high per hour pay needs to shift to higher skill and higher risk activities such as combat, with a slight reduction in mining pay to bring it in line with the significantly lower risk and skill it requires. Credits will no doubt be important in the future, and I'm glad that, for the most part, gold rushes are largely a thing of the past. I, for one, don't miss the constant rush and feeling of regret or loss when you would miss out on one or more of these and hope our future brings balance and stability to earning credits in Elite. Until then, this has been Commander Exegius of edgtutorials.com reminding you to earn dangerously and thanks for watching. If you currently need credits and are unsure what to do, my playlist covering all the best methods is linked here and I hope you'll consider subscribing and supporting me here or on Patreon.